through the years we all will be together. Her name is Essence. The man holding her in these home videos is her father. But Essence will grow up only knowing him through videos, pictures, and stories others tell. She missed her daddy so much. His name was Eric Johnson. He was a correctional officer at the Bird Unit in East Texas. He is one of 23 Texas correctional officers to die from COVID-19 so far. His wife, Charity, is also a correctional officer. His cousin, Shamika Morning. It really has taken a toll on her and her kids. She missed her daddy so much. Charity miss her husband. All the kids miss him. The Texas prison system and his family both agree that Eric likely got COVID-19 at work. In a statement, a prison spokesman told WFA, we have publicly announced that all agency COVID deaths are considered line of duty deaths and are forwarded to the state that way. He was only going work at home. We know that he was around positive offenders at TDCJ. So, I mean, it's common sense. But another state agency, the Office of Risk Management, has denied his family's workers' compensation claim. Workers' compensation covers lost wages and medical expenses. This letter denying the claim says the agency is currently unable to accept this claim as a compensable injury that occurred in the course and scope of employment. Eric was a veteran officer. I mean, that's the thanks he get for putting his, his life on the line all these years. It doesn't make sense to me. Across the state, dozens of families of first responders who've died of COVID-19 are facing a similar bureaucratic maze. Justice for Elizabeth. I think that my sister made the world a better place because of the kind of person that she was. I really do. Correctional officers' lives matter. Elizabeth Jones was a correctional officer at the Carroll Young Unit in Texas City. Her family says she was directly overseeing prisoners sick with COVID-19. And like Eric Johnson, she died of the virus. She was afraid of getting it, and she knew that she was in a position that she was most likely to get it. Her family also was waiting for state benefits. If my sister made one more year, she would have had 20 years with TDC, and she would have had full retirement. She's yes. trying to get there. Trying to get there, and didn't make it. Didn't make it. No. Oh. CLEAT, or the Combined Law Enforcement Associations of Texas, blames Governor Greg Abbott for not acting. They've asked Abbott to sign an executive order that would presume first responders who died of COVID-19 contracted it on the job and make it easier for their survivors to get critical benefits. The governor has not done so. We know lots of people who haven't received a check, and we know lots of people who the either the insurance provider uh, or Texas workers comp have denied claims. In a statement, a spokeswoman for the governor told us, Governor Abbott's heart goes out to the families of those who have lost loved ones due to COVID-19. But the statement says the law already allows first responders to get benefits for respiratory illnesses. But critics say the law wasn't written to cover a pandemic. We've uh, been referred back to the statute that we created that we wrote and struggled to write into law and that we worked hard to pass. We're very proud of it, but it doesn't get there. And we'd be glad to claim that it did. It doesn't. Now, first responder groups are looking for lawmakers to act. State Rep. Ana Maria Ramos of Richardson is leading the charge. And at the end of the day, when you look at all of this, you're talking working class families. They're not asking for, you know, anything that they haven't earned that their families haven't get sacrificed for. Eric and Elizabeth's families just want the state of Texas to honor their sacrifice by helping out the loved ones they left behind. In Dallas, I'm Tanya Iser.